Hi everyone and welcome to a breaking news podcast. It's Andy here from that UFO podcast, obviously, and joining me in a hastily arranged interview for a few minutes of his time is Congressman Tim Burchett. Tim, welcome back to the pod. Thank you for having me on again, brother. Really no. appreciate it. Listen, thank you. I know you're a a busy, busy man and uh, a bit of a disappointing one today. It sounds like a skiff has been arranged. Um, I've seen some comments. We've all seen comments on social media. Can you talk about what your hopes were going into the skiff today and why ultimately you seem to have come out disappointed? Well, I didn't really have any real hopes because that's what we're getting. I told somebody it's like um, all these guys are like, when I talk to them, they're like looking down the barrel of a twenty two rifle. It's just very narrow and very straight and they're honestly telling i feel like they're telling the truth within their limited scope but it is very compartmentalized and we learned our lesson how to do that during the second world war when they're developing the atomic bomb you know had thousands of people working in oak ridge tennessee and maybe maybe 12 apparently only knew what they were doing and so that's how these guys you know they come up and they tell you the truth they could take a lie detector test and pass it because they're, and it's by design, they keep it all contained. Now, the hope, I think, in the summer was David Grush would be a part of this skiff or one of these sorts of settings. <laughs> comments from Senator Gillibrand that he wanted his flights and accommodation paid for. How accurate that reporting was, I'm not entirely sure, or if the comments were flippant, but was the hope to get David Grush in there today and what happened? No, that wasn't the attempt today. Um, we're wor- we're still working on that. We kind of figured out a, a, maybe an angle to get him in there, and how we can do it, and um, and then we'll go from there. So flights and accommodation costs aren't going to be an issue to get David Grush. <laughs> no, uh-uh. it's uh, the trouble we've got is is them just denying his accessibility. We've got to actually. One of our members has a bill, an amendment drawn up to a bill to, to ensure that he is, in fact, able to do that. That seems like it to be a clear cut way to do it. If there's any financial, uh, anything wrong with it, um, I mean, anything, if there's a fiscal cost to it, that that would be provided. Well, I seen Matt Laszlo from Ask a Paul was on the scene and spoke to yourself and Congressman Burleson. And the comment Matt's put online says that it was mentioned, I believe, by Congressman Burleson that someone had found some sort of propulsion. Is that something that has been talked about or Mr. Burleson said? I'm not going to comment on that. Okay. Well, uh, I know you, Matt was... You can get the recording and I won't comment on that. No, of course, that's fine. Uh, still waiting on that coming out from from Matt Laszlo. Um, do you feel the way things are, they're actively being shut down by folks in the background? Absolutely. You know, since 1947, they've told us these things don't exist. And then now they tell us they do exist. And then, but now nobody can tell us where we can look to see if they see where they exist. You know, it's just a... It's like peeling off the layers of an onion. You get down and you get another layer. I think for a long time, it's been faceless names that have maybe tried to get this moved forward in the past, whereas now we do have yourself, uh, Representative Luna, and others actively trying to push this forward. So you're always going to be in the firing line of the the social media world and the UFO fans as such. What, What do you think you can do now with your colleagues to keep pushing forward? Well, we just keep pushing at our government level, but until somebody walks out of one of these um, uh, quasi-governmental businesses, which is which is where they're at, if they if if they even exist anymore, um, they're in these these businesses that so we don't have a we we can't get to them through FOIA. They're government-funded contracts, but FOIA, of course, is Freedom of Information Act, where we can get a hold of. And what's going to have to happen is somebody's going to have to walk out with with material or physical evidence or something like that or and um, and bring it forward to the American public. That's the only way this is ever going to, I think, get to the bottom of it. And what's your very next steps? Have you got something arranged in the coming days or weeks? Yeah, we're going to have a, we're going to have another hearing. I mean, that we're going to do it. We're going to pursue it as far as we can. We need to get some of the defense people in here, maybe some of the defense contractors and chew on them for a little while and let them tell us their limited knowledge again. And we just got to narrow the 
narrow the, the narrow it down. You know, we've we've been with some witnesses. We've talked to NASA, and we need to get these defense contractors in here and some of the people from Department of Defense to talk to us. And finally, have you got a realistic timeline on that happening? I talked to the new speaker today, Mike Johnson, on the floor just just minutes ago, and and he he. Uh, a firm that we're going to go, we're going to try to get something going, whether that be a select committee or, or a full committee. I'd prefer a select committee just because it would allow us, um, I think, more abilities to go after people. So Mike Johnson, friendly to the conversation as such? He was very, I think he'll be, uh, I was one of the eight people that voted to remove the, the former speaker so that he is now speaker. So he might listen to me more than he listens to some other folks. Well, Tim, I appreciate this has been arranged very hastily. Thank you very much for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for speaking to us. It's always a pleasure, brother. And you're never a bother. And sorry I'm on such a short, short leash today. Thank you.